Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of your UFC Hot Takes. As always, if you want to be in these videos in the future, subscribe to the channel, then go to my community tab and find that designated post and leave a comment underneath that, and you will most likely be in that following video that next week. Again, I do appreciate everybody who submitted their hot takes this week, and if you want priority or a higher chance of being in this video, Go to my Twitter at Kendall, K-Y-N-D-1-E, Kendall with a one, and leave a comment underneath that Twitter post, and you will have a higher chance of being in these videos. So without further ado, let's dive into your UFC hot takes. Drickus Duplessis striking is actually really sloppy. If Strickland can keep it on the feet, he wins easily. Now, this has been a topic of discussion for I don't know how long now. I have heard numerous accounts of people saying that Drickus Duplessis striking has looked terrible. He looks drunk on the feet. We have been saying those exact lines since DDP got into the UFC. His striking has never looked good and it's always looked sloppy, but it works. Somehow, every single time he goes into the octagon, he finds a way to win and he puts people out cold or he puts them down in TKO zone. The main reason people were picking Whitaker to beat DDP was because of how sloppy DDP striking looks. And you know exactly what happened after that. DDP put him down and TKO'd him in the second round. And listen, I'm all in for critiquing DDP striking. It doesn't look good. It looks like he's drunk on the feet, man. I totally agree, but it works in a weird way. And Strickland, let's be real here, he doesn't have the best style as well. We can sit here and we can shit on DDP's technical ability or how he looks when he's striking, but Strickland is kind of the same way. He has that goofy, awkward, upright stance. He's moving his arms around a lot. It doesn't look the most technical either. But to give some credit to Strickland, he is a lot more defensively sound than most of these top middleweights. And I think DDP will have a harder time touching that chin of Sean Strickland, but it's possible, man. I will never rule out a Strickland win because it's kind of a 50-50 fight in my opinion, but I think DDP's power will give him the advantage, but Strickland can definitely go out there and piece him up on the feet and win four out of five rounds. Don't get me wrong. I don't know. Basing it off of how DDP striking looks, I think is kind of washed away with time. I think he's proven to us that it doesn't really matter how bad it looks. As long as it works, then it works. And I think at this point, it's safe to say that DDP striking works in the UFC. Leon Edwards is not boring. He is more entertaining than Izzy. Now, that last fight between him and Colby Covington, I it's pretty <laughs> iffy, bro. Like it's that is a Israel Adesanya-esque performance right there. But I will say this, we'll probably have to wait for Leon Edwards to get some more title defenses so he can kind of have that similar resume to Israel Adesanya because at least Adesanya had some KO. So I somewhat agree here. At least Izzy, you know, put down Paulo Costa. At least he put down Pajeda in the rematch. At least he had an amazing fight with Kelvin Gaslam and put down Whitaker after that. And so far throughout Leon Edwards' career, man, he has looked... He kind of just, his style is mainly just outpointing you by a couple strikes around and just winning a close decision because he wants to, to make sure that he ensures his win. Leon doesn't fight to really ever get a nice one punch KO or to put somebody down bad. He doesn't really fight to finish people. He fights just to outpoint you and win on points, which is totally fair, man. But I think that does lend itself to being a very boring fight style. And yeah, throughout his entire career, Leon Edwards has not looked the most entertaining of all fighters. Yeah, his last two fights were boring between him and Colby Covington and Kamar Usman. The Kamar Usman one wasn't going his way and it was not the most exciting fight up until the head kick. The Nate Diaz fight was, you know, not that entertaining. Bilal Muhammad, whatever, no contest. RDA and eh, Gunnar Nelson and the split decision, Donald Cerrone, and eh, like he wasn't really out here finishing people or really out here putting a whooping on guys and making it exciting, not really having any wars. He isn't the most entertaining guy at all. I firmly agree with that, but we have to wait just a little bit to see if he can improve and maybe he might be an entertaining fighter down the line. Maybe his chin might just let him down and get himself into some wars back and forth. That might happen with Leon because he just doesn't have the best chin. So maybe he might get dropped and have to drop a guy back or really go after a dude because he's down on rounds. So yeah, I definitely do kind of agree. He is somewhat a little bit more boring than Izzy. We'll see in the future what happens. He might become a more entertaining fighter as he continues to fight in his career, but we'll definitely see what happens. Alex Pajeda beats the British out of Aspinall at UFC 300. That's the fight to make, and Alex teased it. Now, 
I don't think that Alex Pajeda would beat Tom Aspinall. One thing about Alex Pajeda right now, I think going up to heavyweight, I think he would finally meet his match in terms of size. Pretty much everyone that Pajeda has fought in his UFC career so far, he outmatched them in size besides like Yuri Pajaska. That was the closest one. But going up to heavyweight, I think fighting Tom Aspinall, Aspinall would have maybe a similar or maybe even be bigger than Alex Pajeda. And the grappling, bro, the grappling just takes a huge huge effect on this fight. I think Aspinall is a really intelligent fighter and I don't think he'll go out there and just try to strike up Alex Pajeda. I think he'll go for takedowns and I think him being bigger or just as big as Pajeda will help him get those takedowns going. And if that's the case, I can just see Aspinall taking him down and just outmatching him on the ground because his jiu-jitsu is really good for a heavyweight. One of the first things that Aspinall did in his career was jiu-jitsu or in his life, I mean, was jiu-jitsu. He submitted Arlovsky. He submitted Volkov with relative ease, bro. I can just see him taking him down just with that that extra size on Aspinall. And I just don't think that Pajeda really even deserves a title shot at heavyweight right now. He literally just got his light heavyweight belt. So why would he go up a weight class again? I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it would be the most fair thing to do for all these other heavyweights right now. I mean, I guess I don't really mind it that much because what are we going to do with Aspinall? If the UFC is so hell bent on making Stipe versus John Jones happen, what can Aspinall do in the meantime? And maybe fighting Pajeda wouldn't be so bad for that interim bout, but we all know in our hearts, this fight should not happen. We need to see Pajeda defend his light heavyweight belt against the next up and coming contender. And we need to see Aspinall unify that belt against John Jones in the future. That is what should happen. But I guess if the UFC wants to make some bread, make some moolah, I guess that is a good money fight to put on a call. Aspinall has improved his name value a little bit and Pajeda has been a name since he beat Israel Adesanya so maybe. UFC 300 will be whack due to them thinking it will sell just because it's 300. Now this depends on what they put on the card. If they put Conor on there, Conor McGregor, then it's going to sell some pay-per-views. If it's just some random normal pay-per-view like it is every single year, then yeah, it probably won't sell like how we want it to sell. But if they do stack it up, they put Conor McGregor on there, they put Dustin Poirier on there, they put some big valuable names on that card, it's most likely going to sell. Overall, it just depends on what the UFC wants to do with this card. And right now, it's looking like they're going to stack it up with Conor on there and some other good big title fight. So yeah, I would say it's probably not going to be whack, but we'll see. We'll see what happens when they officially announce some fights for it. Justin Gaethje is more deserving for the next title shot than Charles Oliveira. And I kind of agree here. I do think that Gaethje deserves a reward for taking that fight against Fazeev and passing with fine colors. He does deserve a reward for head kick KOing Poirier out cold. He's done more this year than Oliveira has. Oliveira has only beaten Benil Dariush, and he kind of had his chance, but he got cut. He got injured, which sucks. So, I mean, what do you really do now? It's kind of a murky water situation. So the question becomes, who is more deserving of a title shot? And I do think that Gaethje just has that slight edge because... You know, he beat Fazeev, he beat Poirier, he's done more this year or the, or the past, you know, year and a half than what Oliveira has done. He's ready for a fight now, Oliveira got a cut, he got injured, he kind of lost his chance. I don't, I don't mind either, man. I don't mind Oliveira getting his title shot. I don't mind Gaethje getting it either. I think when you look at the rankings, I think these two guys make the most sense. But I think if you're going to have an argument about who's more credible for the next title shot, I do think Gaethje just kind of just leans that way. But it is what it is. I don't mind either again. Um, Gaethje does deserve it slightly. Islam Makashev has real GOAT potential. Yeah, if he keeps fighting, if he doesn't retire early, I think he can build his stock up, build his resume up, and potentially be a the lightweight GOAT at the very least. Can he be the GOAT of the sport? Definitely, but he has to keep fighting and building that resume. He just can't like beat Gaethje or Nolivera, like I mentioned before, and then retire. Then no, he cannot be the GOAT of the sport. But if he keeps fighting, gets like what? Probably like what? Four more defenses, which is pretty difficult but if he can pull that off then maybe we can have this conversation of maybe islam can be the goat of the ufc or goat of mma entirely i don't know i think beating volk and Oliveira and beating volk twice is very credible wins on his resume like one of the best wins you can have in the ufc in this time period so he does have a big of a a head start, so to speak. But we'll see, man. He has to keep fighting to earn that. Habib without Connor would have been like Pantoja. Fighting and nobody caring. No, not really. It's 
kind of hard because we're kind of playing like a, a prediction model. Like what if Connor never moved back up to lightweight? What if he just like vacated his belt and then Habib just won and just went on with his life and just kept on winning fights? Would people have cared? Maybe not for his first like couple of title defenses, but I think after he built his resume, I think people would have cared, but this is all a what if scenario. What if Habib just lost to somebody randomly? Who knows? But if you want to stick to the current timeline of things, let's say he beats Gaethje again. Let's say he mixes in another title defense somehow in there to make up for Conor McGregor. But let's say he beats Gaethje like he did and then he just retires again. Then yeah, I can kind of see your point. Nobody would have really had that big of an interest in Habib. He wouldn't be as big of a name as he currently is now. But just being 29 and 0, 30 and 0 and having a few defenses underneath of his belt, I think people would have cared about Habib and I think they would have still liked him. Habib has a good personality. I think he's actually a, a funny dude. So I think people would have liked him no matter what. And I think his grappling style wasn't the most boring we've ever seen. I know it was a Dagestani and he was grappling people up all the time, but it wasn't the most boring fight style that we've ever seen from a grappler. We've seen absolute snooze fest. We've seen Bilal Muhammad fight throughout his entire career. Habib at least tried to ground and pound people out. He at least tried to finish a fight. Was it the most entertaining fight style you're ever going to see ever? No way. But I think Habib just had that entertaining grappling style. And I think people would have appreciated that. They wouldn't have hated to watch him fight. Undefeated and having a very good ground and pound style. I think people would have liked them no matter what. And for my last one, Paulo Costa going to pull out. Yeah, probably. It's just Paulo Costa at this point in his career. But that's all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications. Again, go to my community tab and find that community post and give me a comment underneath that. It comes out every single Thursday and the video pops out that following Monday. So make sure if you guys want to be in these future videos, subscribe to the channel and go to that community post. I cannot stress it enough. I really want to give back to you guys and just incorporate my community into videos so this is the best way that i can do it as of right now so get your hot takes in man i'm out of here have a very great holiday season peace happy new year